BTEC Applied Science, uh, this video, Unit 3, no, Unit 3 Physics and Electricity Calculations. So I know some students find this quite easy if they do maths, especially. Uh, if they're not particularly good at maths, uh, I know a lot of students find this pretty difficult. Okay, so a bit of practice. Let's talk about now the electricity that you need to know. This is what the specification says. Um, there's usually not a great deal of electricity. There's usually not a lot of physics on unit three, but sometimes it comes up. And if there was a big question, if the big question was electricity, then unless you knew this stuff, you'd have major problems. So you do need to revise it. You do need to get it into your head. There's, I don't think there's anything there which is more than GCSE. But, but nevertheless, let's have a look at it. Let's do a bit of practice. So first equation, power. Power is voltage times current. I'm going to try and just look at the equations. I'm not going to explain too much about power and voltage, etc. Let's just look at it as an equation. P equals I times V. They say power is voltage times. Why didn't they just say P equals VI? because they're because they're mad basically anyway power is voltage times current i suggest you learn that yes p i v like that in the triangle okay um you're gonna have to probably rearrange the equation you might have to work out the current you might have to work out the voltage so it's worth learning that triangle and you can use these triangles can't you if you want to work out the current, then the current is P over V. In other words, P divided by V. The voltage is the power divided by the current. The power is the current times the voltage. Learn that triangle. OK, uh, power, uh, this bulb, this light bulb, 35 watts. Uh, this kettle, 3 kilowatts. Little k, killer, means a thousand. So in your equation, that's got to be 3000. Yeah, it's got to change it to watts. In this equation, it has to be in watts. Uh, if it's on the mains, the mains in the UK is 240 volts. You'll be given that. You'll be told what the voltage is, uh, unless you're working it out. But usually the mains is 240 volts. Um, one thing you may have to use this equation to do, and it says it in the specification, is figure out the value of the fuse. In the plug, there is a fuse. There's the fuse there. And basically what the fuse is supposed to do is it breaks the circuit if the current is too big. So what you might have to do is work out the current, the normal current, yes, and then from that, figure out what fuse should be in the plug. Uh, let's do an example and you'll see what I mean. So an electric kettle that runs off the 240 volt main supply is rated at a power of three kilowatts. It has a power of three kilowatts. Calculate the current that this kettle will draw from the main supply. In other words, it's like drawing water from a well. You're pulling the water out of the well. This kettle is pulling the current out of the mains. Yeah. So what current will it draw? And then choose a suitable fuse. Have a go yourself. OK, pen, paper, calculator, pause the video, do it. I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. So there we go. So we're working out the current. So I equals P over V. So it's 3000 because it's three kilowatts, 3000 over 240 is 12.5 amps, capital A, amps. So we should use a 15 amp fuse. Why? Uh, if we used a 10 amp fuse, every time you turned on the kettle, the fuse would blow. If you used a 30 amp fuse, there could be a big problem. The kettle could be on fire and setting fire to your kitchen, but the fuse hasn't done anything. You want the value of the fuse to be the one which is just below the normal current, yeah, the working current. 
Here's another equation. Voltage is current times resistance. V equals I times R. Again, there's your triangle. So V, I, R. Um, learn that triangle. Be able to use it. Resistance. Everything has got resistance. Unless it's a superconductor, everything has got resistance. The kettle has, this kettle has a resistance of about 19 ohms. You get fixed resistors. Uh, you get variable resistors. Variable resistors like these, they're all over your house, on your cooker. If you turn a knob, a volume knob, uh, on a guitar, on an amplifier, there's knobs like these all over the place. So variable resistors, a dimmer switch, okay? Voltage is current times resistance. Um, remember, big voltage equals big current, yeah? The bigger the voltage, the more current you're going to get because the voltage pushes the current around the circuit. So big voltage, lots of current. Also remember, small resistance equals a big current. Yeah, big resistance means it's hard for the current to get through, so it will be small. Small resistance means the current will be big. So this dimmer switch here would be a, a variable resistor. And when you make the resistance smaller, then the current gets bigger and the lights get brighter. Have a go at this one again, pen, paper, calculator, have a go. I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. And there you go. So R equals V over I, uh, 12 over 4.58, 2.62 ohms. Another one, power equals work done over time. And then the say the equation P equals E over time. E is energy. I would much rather they had said energy transferred over time. Power is energy transferred over time. I mean, I know something like a motor will do mechanical work, but something like a kettle doesn't. Any kind of heating element, it, it transfers electrical energy into heat. Is that work? Not really, no, it's not mechanical work. Anyway, I'm waffling. Power is work over time, energy over time, energy transferred over time. There's your triangle, learn your triangle, okay? We can talk about the power of a, an electric motor in the fan, in the car, how much work it does in a certain time. Uh, we could use this equation to work that out. There's a question for you to do. Uh, the question says, how much energy does it transfer? In fact, it might say, how much work does it do? Anyway, have a go, pen, paper, calculator, and the answer is, there you go. So using our triangle, energy is power times time, uh, and be careful with minutes, two times 60. Time has to be in seconds. Uh, 144,000 joules. You could write 144 kilojoules if you wanted to, to show off, but that will do. That will get the marks. Now, look at this. Energy transferred is voltage times current times time. We can't do a triangle on this one. You can only do a triangle if there are three things. There's four different things. We can't do a triangle. What we can do is if you look at it, so E equals V times I times T, V times I is power. So it's just energy is power times time, isn't it? Yes? Have a go at this question. Answer coming up in three, two, one. And there you go, pretty straightforward. What you could do is work out the power and then do energy is power times time would give the same answer, obviously. Now, energy is measured in joules. You can measure energy in kilowatt hours. Uh, when do we measure energy in kilowatt hours? Well, when you're working out how much electricity your house has used, uh, the electricity board, they, they want to know how many kilowatt hours, and then each kilowatt hour might cost uh, 10 to 20 pence, something like that. And that's how they work out your electricity bill. So you've got this thing under the stairs or where in the garage or whatever, and that works out how many kilowatt hours. Kilowatt hours, now if it's energy, then it's power times time. But 
energy is power times time. You can have joules is watts times seconds. Here, it's kilowatt, kilowatt hours is kilowatts times hours, okay? Kilowatt hours is kilowatts times hours. So how many kilowatt hours something uses up depends on its power in kilowatts and how long you use it in hours. Have a go at this one, uh, pen paper calculator, and I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. And there you go. Kilowatt hours, kilowatts times hours. So three kilowatts for three hours, nine kilowatt hours. And if it was 10 pence a kilowatt hour, that would be 90 pence for using that kettle. Right then, here's a bit more practice. Hopefully you can do all of these now. As I said, learn your triangles. There's not that much to learn. Learn these triangles for these equations. Uh, have a go at these questions, read them yourself, get them done. And the answers are in three, two, one. There you go.